So, despite what I would consider a successful postseason for the Clippers, with them making it to the conference finals for the first time in franchise history, they are sort of in a tough spot, both for this offseason, the next regular season, and really for the next decade with the amount of picks they owe and their lack of assets, as well as having two superstars on the wrong side of 30. Uh, but the main thing that prompts this is that Kawhi obviously went down in the Jazz series and didn't play in the Sun series, and we found out pretty recently that he had a partially torn ACL, and he could be out for all of, if not most of, next season. And that's obviously terrible news for the Clippers, made even worse due to the fact that they owe their pick to the Thunder next year. So they're not going to have their first round pick no matter how they finish. Now they still have Paul George as well as some decent supporting players, but obviously not having Kawhi, it definitely hurts where they'll be in the seeding. And the whole next season could really be a wash for them if Kawhi can't come back in time for the playoffs or isn't fully healthy. So... Uh, really is not good news at all for the Clippers. Uh, you know, you just think, I think it's going to be a lot bigger burden on Paul George like it was in the playoffs. Uh, lots of minutes, lots of responsibility, lots of shots, and then they need some other guys to step up, uh, whoever that is, whether it's Reggie Jackson continuing to step up if, if they bring him back, or Marcus Morris maybe going back to averaging like 20 points a game like he did on the Knicks. Uh, but yeah, they're going to need uh, some people to step up alongside Paul George if they want to make the playoffs. And with the play-in coming back, I'd say with no Kawhi, that's probably their most likely scenario. And once you get in there, it could be tough depending on if you're a 7 or an 8 seed or a 9 or a 10 seed. Uh, but just overall, uh, this Kawhi injury not only really halted their season this year but uh could well probably will for next season too and then there's the other thing and that's the fact that Kawhi Leonard is a free agent which makes it a little tougher so they might not even have Kawhi uh he does have a player option which you know with this injury he could just accept and become a free agent next year uh he could also accept and extend if he accepts it he can get a five-year extension uh, which would take him into his mid-30s. He's 30 years old right now. Or he could decline it and sign a maximum of a four-year extension. So, But either way, uh, the Clippers are paying uh, an injury-riddled guy uh, the max contract for uh, the next four or five years, which obviously if you offered Kawhi Leonard to and all the teams in the NBA, all 30 of them would say yes, but uh, it's not the best position to be in, especially given the amount of picks they give up to get Paul George and to get him, uh, Kawhi Leonard. So, yeah, not great for uh, the Clippers there, but they don't really have any other option. Like, if they don't uh, keep Kawhi, then they're just bad. Or, well, they're not bad. They still have Paul George, but they're not as good, and they need to be good because they don't have their picks for the next seven years or whatever it is obviously some of it is pick swaps but it's still a lot of picks and a huge lack of assets um they do have the 25th pick in this year's draft which you know it's apparently it's a pretty deep draft so maybe they could get a steal there someone who can contribute uh ideally um if i'm thinking of what the clippers need well without Kawhi now uh you'd think that morris becomes morris and george become the fords uh, Zubox starts at center, and then probably maybe you want to go Reggie Jackson and Patrick Beverly in the backcourt. Maybe Terrence Mann has earned a starting spot, but I would say they should probably look to draft maybe another athletic wing uh, similar to Terrence Mann, or maybe they need some more shooting uh, at the point guard position. They do have Reggie Jackson, but if they don't bring him back, or you know, they just need a bit more offense without Kawhi. That could be a fit. Also, I believe they are able to trade the pick after they make it. So maybe they want to look to move it for... It would have to be something that helps them right now, obviously. Uh, because, you know, trading for something down the road just doesn't really make sense given the age of their superstars. Uh, and then, yeah, they have some decisions to make in free agency. Kawhi Leonard, I already mentioned, he has a player option. Serge Ibaka has a player option for $9 million. 
given the amount of injuries he's had uh, this season, I would say he'd probably accept that. Then you have Reggie Jackson, who they need to bring back, who was obviously great in this postseason, their second best player once Kawhi went down. And then you also have Nick Batum, who's a free agent, which, you know, his market uh, could swing so much, you know, maybe no one wants him, or maybe he's getting plenty of offers, and the Clippers, uh, they're going to be paying a lot of luxury tax if they want to bring back these guys. They already are. Uh, and then there's also DeMarcus Cousins, who, you know, maybe they bring back, maybe they don't, just depends on how many teams want them. So they have all these players they need to bring back, and basically no cap space to make any other additions. Uh, which is bad. The one thing they could do is a sign-in trade. Uh, I'd think they would be even more willing and enthusiastic to, to get a sign-in trade done now with the Kawhi injury. Uh, someone with some extra offense. If I think in this free agency class, obviously the two best players who they could realistically sign and trade are DeMar DeRozan and Kyle Lowry. Uh, you know, if they can get either one of those done with the 25th pick and, you know, Kennard, Zubok, Beverly Morris, whatever combination of that, as well as I think they still have a few more second round picks, though maybe they're out of them by now. That would obviously be great, either one of them, but particularly DeRozan and what he could give them offensively. Uh, apart from that, I'm thinking of players that, you know, because you need two teams to make the sign trade work and the player wants to go. Like, what team would want to take back uh, Kennard? Oh, one more thing I forgot to mention. They could just do a normal trade. And one guy I'm thinking about right now is Kemba Walker. Could that make sense? Uh, he could obviously give them some offense, though he is injury prone. And, you know, maybe is past his prime. But to just to get his shooting and creation, I think, you know, would the Clippers give up? I don't know what the move would be, but maybe like Kennard, Beverly, uh, the 25th pick, and some second round picks for Kemba Walker. I think that's a, they'd probably do it. And then if the Thunder, you know, I mean, I don't know how enthusiastic the Thunder would be about helping out the Clippers given the amount of picks the Clippers owe them, but maybe the Thunder think, yeah, let's give them another guy who is a bit older and those 2025 2026 picks are looking real good so uh whether that could be a deal that could be done uh i don't know the clippers just need something for next season uh if they want to honestly just make the playoffs given the amount of good teams there is in the west like without Kawhi, if you think like there's so many the west is so deep almost all the teams are going to be make trying to make the postseason like you think uh like the Jazz are going to be there again. The Suns are going to be there again. The Lakers, the Nuggets, uh, that's four right there. The the Mavericks with Luka, uh, the Blazers, if they still have Dame, uh, the Grizzlies, the Pelicans, those are young teams on coming up. I'm sure I'm missing some given I haven't named too many, but you know, plenty of teams are going to be competing for 1 through 10 to try and get into the playoffs or the play-in, so... I think the Clippers are definitely talented to make the playoffs next season, even without Kawhi, but uh, it's certainly not going to be easy. And, you know, one injury to Paul George and their season could be over. And then you get to the 2023 season and they're sort of running out of time. And this Kawhi injury really hurts them. And they probably need something this offseason. That's sort of my point. So, yeah, we'll see what they do. Uh, the obviously, I I think they have a pretty good front offense, front office, and an owner in Steve Ballmer who's willing to pay the luxury tax. So, uh, from that standpoint, I think they're pretty good. And then they still do have Paul George and Kawhi Leonard, no matter how old and injury prone they are. So, uh, not the end of the world, but this Clippers are sort of in a tough spot. Anyways, thanks for watching this video, guys. Leave a like, subscribe to this channel for more NBA content, and I'll see you guys next time.